In the grand theater of the cosmos, one mystery has haunted every civilization. Where did we come from? What made Earth? Earth. Among billions of galaxies, trillions of stars and uncountable planets, only one has life. Just one. A glowing blue dot. Suspended in a beam of sunlight. Our home. Our planet is part of a rare family, the terrestrial planets. Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. Baked in the furnace of the young solar system, they were sculpted from rock and metal. But farther out, the giants loom, Jupiter and Saturn, massive storms of hydrogen and helium. Beyond them, the icy twins, Uranus and Neptune, swirling with methane, tilted and strange. All planets orbit the Sun in a shared cosmic dance along a flattened plane called the ecliptic. But among them, only Earth sings the song of life. Between Mars and Jupiter lies a chaotic band, the asteroid belt, remnants of a failed planet. And even farther, beyond Neptune, is the Kuiper belt, a frozen realm home to Pluto, Eris and other icy dwarfs. When Eris was discovered, larger than Pluto, astronomers had a choice. Add a dozen new planets, or change the rules. In 2006, Pluto was humbled. A new category was born, the dwarf planets. But the real question remains. If all these worlds are built from the same dust, why is only Earth alive? The answer lies not in our solar system, but in the death of stars. Billions of years ago, colossal stars burned bright and died young, ending in supernova explosions. These were no ordinary blasts. These were the most powerful events since the Big Bang. And in their fiery ends, they forged the heavy elements. Iron, carbon, oxygen, gold, uranium. Everything that makes up mountains, oceans, and you. Yes, you are made of stardust. Your blood, your bones, your brain, all born in the hearts of dying stars. Even more astonishing, these atoms came from different stars, scattered across different galaxies. We didn't just come from the stars, we came from the stars far away. In a very real sense, we are strangers in our own solar system. Earth's earliest form was nothing like the world we know today. Chaotic, molten and merciless. And then came a cosmic catastrophe so fierce it nearly erased all possibility of a future. A Mars-sized planet, Thea collided with Earth. The impact was cataclysmic, but it didn't destroy us. It transformed us. Part of Thea sank into Earth, deepening its iron core, powering a magnetic shield that still protects us from solar radiation. The rest became the Moon. And this wasn't just a pretty object in the night sky. The Moon stabilized Earth's tilt, softened our seasons, slowed our rotation, controlled the tides, Without it, Earth would have wobbled like a spinning coin. Chaotic, uninhabitable. The impact was just off-center. If it had been direct, Earth might have shattered. Into nothing more than dust and regret. Just a few degrees off. And Earth might have ended up as rubble in the asteroid belt. But the universe got it just right. Then came the late heavy bombardment. For millions of years, meteorites rained down bombs from the edges of the solar system. But these weren't destroyers. They were deliverers. Locked inside each meteorite was frozen water. Tiny crystals. Millions of them. Over time, they filled Earth's basins. Rivers flowed. Oceans formed. Life needs water. Earth was being prepared. But Earth's early atmosphere was hellish. Carbon dioxide, sulfur, methane, Volcanoes belched fire across a barren land. Skies were red. Air was poison. No oxygen. No breathing. No life. And then, it happened again. Another miracle. Meteorites brought something more than water. They brought the building blocks of life. Amino acids. Tiny, fragile molecules. The alphabet of biology. Somehow, in the chaos, they assembled. They copied themselves. They evolved. Life had begun.
single-celled organisms. Fragile, tenacious. And then, they discovered light. Through photosynthesis, they turned sunlight into energy and released a dangerous gas, oxygen. But oxygen was toxic to early life. As levels rose, CO2 fell. The greenhouse blanket disappeared. The planet froze. Snowball Earth. A deep freeze that lasted millions of years. The equator was as cold as Antarctica. Glaciers reached the oceans. Life clung on, barely surviving in pockets of warmth. We almost didn't make it. But Earth fought back. Volcanoes erupted. CO2 surged. The greenhouse blanket returned. Ice melted. Oceans stirred and hidden in the ice. A secret. Hydrogen peroxide, formed under UV rays, began to decompose, releasing oxygen. The atmosphere was reborn. As oxygen filled the air, something magical happened. Up in the stratosphere, three oxygen atoms combined, forming ozone. Earth now had a shield. For the first time, the planet could block deadly UV rays. Life could finally leave the oceans. And when it did, it exploded. The Cambrian Explosion. 550 million years ago, a sudden burst of innovation. Eyes, shells, fins, brains, teeth. Nature began its greatest experiment. But life needed a stable stage. Too little oxygen and evolution would stall. Too much and Earth would ignite. That balance was struck. 21% oxygen, not 18, not 25, exactly 21. At 23%, lightning would have set the forests ablaze. Indefinitely, nature found the golden number, just enough to breathe, not enough to burn. And all this time, Earth's magnetic shield kept working, blocking cosmic rays, deflecting solar flares. Without it, the solar wind would have stripped away our atmosphere, just like it did to Mars. And from those first cells, to fish, to reptiles, to mammals, to us, humans emerged. A species that questions, wonders and dreams, that builds cities, that reaches for the stars, that tells stories, like this one, the supernovae, the collisions, the oceans, the moon, the magnetic shield, the freeze and thaw, the amino acids, the 21% oxygen. Every single thing had to go right. One wrong impact, no moon, no meteorites, no water, no ozone, no land life. 1% more oxygen permanent firestorms, and we would not exist. We won the cosmic lottery. So until the day we find another world like this, and we haven't, this fragile, beautiful planet is all we've got. Protect it, cherish it, defend it. Because Earth isn't just our home, it's a miracle.